All right, is that again? Somebody asked a question about how to use a duck slide. I'm going to do this quick. There's football to watch right now. So we got to get things in their proper order. But I get frustrated when I see people making comments about how to do stuff that is just the perpetual ballparking and rule of thumb. So let's talk about it the correct way to begin with. What you're looking at right here, let me turn my pointer on. There we go. What you're looking at here is the duck slide. It has a whole lot of different friction rates. Before we even start to talk about how to use this duck slide, I want to point out there's no such thing as a always use 0.1, always use 0.08. Don't make things up. Let's calculate this friction. Let's actually figure out how much resistance to airflow per 100 feet that the duct system has. And how we do that, okay, I'm forever going through that struggle of finding the laser pointer. What we have here is the friction rate worksheet. The friction rate worksheet is the process to determine what our friction rate is. There's no set friction rate, the 0.1s, the 0.08s that you frequently hear people saying, it, it's made up, right? Uh, do you use beer can cold for checking the charge on a piece of equipment or do you measure superheat and subcooling? A better analogy is if you're working for 30 bucks an hour and at the end of the week, uh, the person who's supposed to pay you says, yeah, we're just going to ballpark it. I'll give you 600 bucks. Is that good? No, we want to use actual math to, to calculate this stuff. So stop the nonsense. The friction rate worksheet's very straightforward. It is the, the backbone, if you will, of ACA's manual D. And we can determine what the actual friction loss per 100 feet to our duct system is if we calculate our friction rate. It's pretty straightforward. The 1,000 CFM comes from another calculation that uh, is not 400 CFM per ton. It's based off the sensible BTUs that are required for the house. The sensible heat ratio of the house dictates what our CFM per ton value is. I have a sensible heat ratio video. Uh, go look at that if you're not familiar with sensible heat ratio. We're talking about duct slides today, though. But you can't just use a duct slide. You have to calculate your friction rate first. So we have 1,000 CFM as our uh, required airflow. And when we looked in the blower tables from the furnace manufacturer in this example, we found that we have 0.6 for our external static pressure at 1,000 CFM. From that, we're going to try and solve for our available static pressure, which is done by taking any pressure losses that exist in the system. In the system, what we're, we're solving for is the critical path in the duct system. And the critical path is the one duct run, longest return plus the longest supply to figure out what the worst case scenario is. The idea behind this is if we can design a duct system that can deliver the proper volume at an acceptable velocity to the worst case scenario, then we can get the proper amount of air at acceptable velocities to the rest of them. So that's why there's only one register, one grill, one damper included in this worksheet, because we're solving this for the critical path. Our total device losses, when we add them up, come up to 0.4. Some real easy math in step three is our external static pressure from above minus our device losses from step two gives us an available static pressure of 0.2. This is an example of a worksheet that you'll find in Manual D, and it shows us taking trunk lengths and fittings and everything to solve for our supply as well as our return critical path. Here's a visual of it. Right? This fitting right here is worth 40 feet. There's 20 feet here. This fitting right here is worth another 40 feet. So we have 100 feet in TEL on the return side. This fitting, its effective length is 35 feet. The trunk itself is 10 feet long. Where this branch run comes off has an effective length value of 65. All totaled up on the supply right here, we have 200 feet in TEL. We populate the friction rate worksheet with the 200 plus the 100 to solve for our TEL, which is 300 feet. And then we simply take the friction rate chart, also known as the ACA wedge, and we put in 300 feet and it intersects with the 0.2 uh, available static. 
and we're somewhere between 0.06 and 0.08. If you wanted to round that to 0.07 for your friction rate, knock yourself out. No, absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. I got a little carried away here, and I am showing you the math. Our friction rate's equal to available static pressure times 100 divided by your TEL. It works out as so. Our friction rate ends up being 0.066. If you want to use 0.066, cool. If you want to use 0.07, cool. It, it, it's not going to make that much of a difference. The big thing here is don't arbitrarily use 0.1 or some mythical number that people just like to pull out of their, well, let's keep this PG. So we solved for step five, which was our friction rate of 0.066. Here's a duculator. I have my CFM and I'm, this is an existing picture. I'm not using the thousand value uh, that I showed in the friction rate worksheet. But this is, I'm going to get my camera and stuff out for this right now. This right here is a, a duck slide. I have it set at 0.066, and I have it over 400 CFM. That's 400 CFM with reference to my friction rate of 0.066. If you come down here, you follow the 400 down to here, that tells me that whatever duck size I select from either of these two red circles, the air is going to be moving at a velocity, in this case, of 650 feet per minute. So this is CFM with reference to my friction. Another word for that could be pressure loss. And my CFM down here with reference to velocity is how fast the air is moving. Manual D caps velocity in the return duct at 900 feet per minute. Uh, I said that backwards, 900 for the supply, 700 for the return, and I drop 100 or, or 200 feet uh, per minute off of that because that's where I like to size my ductwork. It's not really what we're trying to talk about tonight. But with my ductulator set here by 8, I'm going to say I need a piece of 12 by 8 at a 0 0.066 friction to give me 400 CFM at a velocity of 650 feet per minute. And then if we're talking about round pipe, we would round up to 12 inch, unless you have access to 11, I don't. So I like to think that that uh, gives you a little bit of a, a window into how this works. And um, if you have more questions, ask. So see you later.